Welcome back to my series on procedural generation using Godot 3.0. In this video, we're going to look at generating random maps as you explore them. If you download the starting project from the link below, you'll get the following scenes already set up and ready for us to, to make this project. So we're going to start by using the isometric tile map. So this is the tile set that we talked about in the previous video, isometric road tile set with roads for all 16 possible combinations. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that you start out, say you're standing on this square, this is the starting square. And when you move to another tile, we're going to randomly pick a tile that goes there. And then when you step to the next one, we're going to pick a different one. And we'll make sure we always pick one that matches. So we don't, always, don't ever get something like um, that. You know, we don't ever get a, a mismatched tile. So the maze, we'll rename this to roads. But we're, this is going to be the scene that we'll do our main exploring and our main, write our main code in. Okay, we also have a truck scene. And this scene contains the vehicle that the player will be driving. So this is going to be the player, and we're going to move from square to square driving this little truck around. And it's using an animated sprite to display the different art for the, the car facing in the different directions. And we're basically going to only use north, south, east, west, but it does have some for the all eight directions. Uh, so that is our starting setup. All right, so I'm going to briefly review the code for the truck, because what I want to focus on for this is writing the code for the map. So this, the code for the truck is going to be as follows. And we're just going to review it real quickly. So we have some constants here, like we did in the map video, uh, designating what north, south, east, and west values are in our tile set. Then we have a mapping that maps those to the animations, so that if the player moves north, we can change the truck to show the north-facing image. For moves we have a mapping from the direction we want to go in to what vector that represents in the tile space so moving one vec one space north is you know negative one in y and then we, we're going to have a variable that keeps a reference to the map itself the tile map which is going to be uh, in the parent scene we're going to keep track of our map position that's what tile we're on right we don't actually care that we are in isometric space or orthogonal space. It doesn't matter to the player. They're just moving from one tile to the next. If they're on tile number four comma three and they move to the right, they're going to be on tile five comma three. And, and if that in the display space looks orthogonal, that doesn't matter to the player. Speed is how fast our animation is going to happen. It's going to take one second to move from one square to the next square. So you can speed up or slow down your movement speed. And then we're going to have a flag here that keeps track of whether we're already moving. That way, when we are in the middle of a move animation and we press a key, another move won't get kicked off. We're only allowed to move when we've stopped moving. Now we have a check here, a function that will check to see if a move is allowed. So when we press north, we don't want to be able to move north if it's blocked. So this is going to do that comparison. Right? We're going to get the ID of the cell, like we did previously in the, in the maze function, and we're going to compare that with the four, with the direction that we wanted to go in. And if that east wall is on, it's set to a one, then this is going to be, this is going to be true. So we will return that can move is false. Otherwise the move is allowed. Then we have our input, which is going to ignore things if we're already moving. Otherwise, it's going to move in the direction matching the key we pressed. And then here's our move function itself, right? If we can't, if we're not allowed to move, we will do nothing. Then we will change to the animation that matches the direction. We will increment our move, our map position by whatever vector we're moving in. And then we're going to check if the square we're moving into is a negative one. And in tile maps, a negative one means an empty square. So if we're moving into an empty square, we're going to tell the map 
to generate a tile. We're going to tell our parent to generate a tile. And that's the code we're going to be writing in a few minutes. And then after that, we just need to do a little tween animation to change our position from the current position to the destination, which is one tile over, the center of one tile over, plus a little bit for the size of the uh, truck itself. And that's it. When the animation finishes, moving goes back to false, and we're allowed to move again. So you'll see how this works in a few minutes when we start working on the map. So let's instance a truck in our scene. And I mean, you can drag it and put it there. We're, we're going to place it on the starting cell uh, via code anyway, so don't worry about getting it centered and perfect. But it's going to start on R1 starting square, and you can pick whatever starting square you want. Um, and then the truck has a camera attached to it, so it will follow, so the camera will follow the truck as it drives around, so you will be able to explore essentially infinitely in whatever direction the roads take you. So we need to start working on the code now for how we're going to generate this. Now we're going to start with some of the same information that we have used before, and that's our constants and our mappings from uh, between vectors and directions. And you notice we use the same ones over in the truck script too. So this is the kind of thing that if you're using it a lot, you could make this an auto load, put it in a in a singleton that you can access from everywhere. Uh, but for right now, with our for these small demos, I'm okay with copying and pasting it and having it in two places. We're never going to change what north is. We've defined north as the one first digit, east as the second digit, and so on. So and then we have a reference to our tile map so that we can use that. And then in our ready, we're going to set the truck map to the map, right? We want, because we added a, we added a property to the truck that references the map. So we'll give it that reference. Uh, we're going to set the truck's uh, map position to our starting tile, which we put at zero, zero, so we're going to just stick with that. And then the truck dot position. this is the starting pixel position on the screen. We're going to find that by map to world, and we use the truck's map position, right? And then we're going to add that offset so that it's at the center of the tile. And you'll see when we run it, that's going to stick our truck right there at the center of the tile to start. Now if we try to move we're going to get an error because our truck script when we move tries to call generate tile because as soon as we move we're going to move into an empty tile. So we're going to add that. Now what does and we want to generate it whatever location we're moving into right when we call it we're going to call it to generate the tile that we're moving into. So we want to generate a tile at this location. And that means we need to find all the tiles that will fit in that location. So in the case of this situation, right, when we move to this spot, right, the tiles that fit there, like for example, nine does not, right, eight does not, seven would be fine, right? So we need it to go through and find out whichever ones have the same tile uh, the same t uh, wall value on this side as the cell that we're moving out of has on its opposite side. So we're going to get a, we're going to make a function called find valid tiles that will return a list of the cells that fit in that spot. And then we'll set our map uh, location to that. So cell, and we'll pick a random value out of it. And that will do it. And now how do we find those valid tiles? So this function returns all tiles that, all valid tiles, sorry, valid tiles for a given cell. So we need to check all of them. Right? So we need to check all tiles from 0 through 
through 15 and see if uh, any of them will fit. So first we have to get each of their neighbors, each of that cell's neighbors. Right, so we have to check chart spacers neighbors if they exist, right? They may not have one. So if we think about it, we might have a situation like, let's say we had this. We have a curved road here. We have a straight road coming out like that. And then it curves this way and has that. So now if we move on to we move on to this spot, right? When we move here, the tile that we pick has to match this side, this side, and this side, right? Which is how we're going to determine what fits. So there's actually only a couple of tiles that'll fit there, right? This one will fit there. The curve going out will fit there. Where is that one? Right, that'll fit there, right? Because it needs to be solid on these two sides and open on this side and then this side is is can be any okay so now in our code what we can do is if the the cell is there right so first we're going to have a we're going to set a flag here right we're going to assume it doesn't match right and then for in in each of those keys, right? Each of the vectors, each of the directions, right? Neighbor ID is map.get cell. We want to get that cell. We want to get cell the cell we're currently in plus n, right? We're going to check all the neighbors. All right. So if that neighbor ID is not equal, is greater than or equal to zero, right? That means if it's not a an empty tile then we want to see if there is a wall match between the neighbor tile that we're checking and the tile we're trying to place, right? Which would be I. So if those two things have their walls matching. And in the maze tutorial, we talked about how you can take the neighbor ID and you can do a bitwise and with the cell walls value and compare that with the same thing with the other cell right one's negative one's positive because they're the opposite and then if this here returns zero that means that there the wall is open so if this wall, this returns zero and this returns zero that means they're both open so that matches and then this would return non-zero and non-zero and that's the only problem you're going to have is this will miss some matches and to show you how let me do a quick demo so i'm going to do this in the python shell real quick just because uh, python does the bitwise operators the same way and i can just demonstrate this real quick so let's say our cell we're looking at is number 15 right that's the one that has walls on all four sides so that means if we say i and one the north wall we're going to get one. If we say I and two, well, we know that wall is there too. So what do you think it's going to return? You might think it would return one, because, but this isn't a true or false test. So it returns two and so on. And so when you test the, the west wall, for example, you get an eight. Well, that means that if we're trying to match two tiles, we might have a situation where we're trying to compare is two equal to eight. And that's no good. That would mean that the east and west wall, it doesn't think the east and west wall values match up, right? One of these is west, one of these is east. So the way to, to fix that is to do, is to just divide by the value you're comparing, right? Then you're going to get a one, and then now our, our answers will be zero or one. If we were on uh, tile number zero, for example, I percent eight over eight, that's going to be zero. So that's what we need to do here. So these two comparisons, they have to be divided by the same value, which leads to a fairly long line, but it does solve our problem. Okay. So now we, 
if those two things match, then we have a match, right? If these two values are equal, either both zero or both one, then is match can be true. Otherwise, is match is going to be false. And we have to set it to false because we might have checked one side. Remember, we're doing this, right? If we check this side and find a match, and this matches, but the one we, then when we check this wall, it doesn't match, then the whole tile has to be thrown away, right? Because it has to match all the sides. So we set is match to false if we find a mismatch between two walls. And if that happened, since we found a mismatch, we might as well break, because there's no point in testing any of the other walls. If we found one that doesn't match, the whole tile has to get tossed out. So now what we can do is if, so if we got through all of that and is match is true, we want to add it to our list of tiles. So if we found a match and we haven't already added it, right? If we find a match and it's not in the list already, actually, I realized we got to make a, we need a, a variable to store all these. Right, we're returning a an array of the valid tiles. So, so if we found a match and it's not already in the list of matches, then we'll append it. And then at the end, we can return uh, valid tiles. Okay, let's give it a shot. So there I am. If I press the right arrow key, I'm going to move east, move onto that square. If I press the down arrow key, I'm going to move south. Oh, and there we go. It filled in what goes there. Press right, down. You see, I'm now I'm exploring. Oh, got a dead end there. I can go down. All right, and now I have an infinite random world I can explore. I can just keep going. And I know that the tiles will always match up, right? So what do you think is going to happen if I go east here, right? The only one that would fit in that spot was that one, All right? So that's our infinitely generated world. In the next video, we'll talk about some more things we can do with this now that we have the basic functionality working.